late economic growth. In fact, uh, if we were to see uh, the institutions such as IDPL, NMDC, NFC, IICT, and so forth, they were all set up in Hyderabad. Because of the fact that public sector undertakings, these huge investments, came up in Hyderabad, Hyderabad as an area grew beyond any other place in the state. That is the reason why but once these kind of institutions come up, then automatically it leads to a transformation. It leads to better salaried employees coming out of that location, coming out of that place, which in turn leads to a cyclic effect where better institutions would come up, overall economic growth takes place, and then the, the city starts moving and growing. Unfortunately, for us, it so happened that 90% of the entire PSUs, which were allocated to the erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh, have all come up only in Hyderabad. And because of that, Hyderabad grew at a much faster pace than any other place in the state. In fact, so much so that uh, the services sector in Telangana, for instance, grew, is now currently positioned at uh, a 62.87 percent, uh, the tertiary sector, whereas the national average is 55 percent. And uh, in the same, the tertiary sector, state of Andhra Pradesh, we stand at mere 40 percent. So the agriculture sector, what is, what should be at 17 percent as a national average, we are at 35 percent. The services sector, which is the tertiary sector, which should have actually been at 55 percent, which is the national average, we are at 40 percent whereas Telangana is at 62.87% of the state's GSDP comes from just the services sector, that is the tertiary sector, and predominantly from Hyderabad. So until and unless you have a similar kind of situation also boost the Andhra Pradesh's economy, we will never see the services, the rise of the services sector. It's only the manufacturing sector that is, we are on par with the national average, which is 25%, which is the secondary sector. But there is a huge thrust that should be put in the tertiary sector, which should grow leaps and bounds, which is the services sector. And our dependence on agriculture gradually should come down, per se meaning to say, per se not meaning to say that uh, the growth should come down. The growth in agriculture sector is per se not much. You do not have, you do not see the kind of numbers what you see in the services sector. So it's very important for any particular state to grow. It's very important that secondary sector, that is, the, that is uh, the services sector, that is the tertiary sector, should grow leaps and bounds. In fact, uh, owing to this reason, the per capita income of Andhra Pradesh, if one were to compare with Telangana, is only 2,19,518. When compared to the figures of those in Telangana, you would see 3,12,398 for the year 2022-23. This is the per capita income. Predominantly, it is coming from Hyderabad. The reason why I'm saying this is we would have to have a balanced growth. We would have to have, we would have to harness the strengths that we have. We have a huge, such is the proactive nature of the government. 
and such is the conducive business friendly environment prevalent in the state that consistently for the past 3 years in the in the category of ease of doing business the state is rated number 1 this one major achievement that the state can boast about uh trying to showcase that we per se are very friendly to environment very friendly to industries now having said that it is a, it is attracted almost 13 lakh crores in the global investor summit which we concluded last year 352 mous were signed an employment potential of close to 6 lakhs and uh, at a brisk pace these mous are being uh, translated into reality in fact out of 352 mous that uh, we have uh, actually signed in fact 39% of these mous have actually translated into actual uh, commissioning of the plants so at a brisk pace uh, these things are happening and uh, we have uh, also been the economy per se if one were to look at it just doesn't come with only the elite or the aloof or the big manufacturing sector alone coming up it's got a mix of it's got to be a mix of everything in fact uh, so much so that i would say that the state government has implemented in these 5 years several welfare programs orienting them towards sustainable self employment in fact every scheme of the state government if one were to notice the schemes especially the welfare schemes one would be surprised to see how, what kind of a transformational bearing these schemes have to begin with everything is dbt direct benefit transfer where there's no middleman in between where everything is transparent and there's no corruption there now having said that every scheme is hand holding women so much so that every scheme is translating say for instance i speak about uh, chhe youth is one particular scheme the scheme actually narrates hand holding women the same particular women consistently for 4 years every year giving 18750 rupees for the same woman so in 4 years time you actually hand hold the same women giving every year 18750 to the same women while we are doing that we ensured that there is a bank tie up also coming into picture we have also ensured that big companies starting from amol to itc to reliance to procter and gamble to such kind of big companies also partnering with these women in sharing opportunity you know most of the employment cycle doesn't come from government employment government employment per se before we had come in probably we had 4 lakh jobs in government sector and probably our government being very proactive in actually providing for jobs could actually create another 2 lakh jobs which is actually very high before we had come in we had 4 lakhs for decades and after we had come in we actually created 50% more jobs in government sector but that is where it can end it cannot go beyond that you're talking about 4 lakhs being to 6 lakhs then per se the big industries also when we were to speak of if we were to speak of if we one were to see the translation of opportunities of jobs actually created per se for investment that is actually put in would probably translate to probably 
a crore of investment translating into one particular job. Not much. Maybe adding to another two or three lakhs, not beyond that. The major contribution comes from three other sectors. One is agriculture, which actually constitutes 62% of the workforce. Now what we have done is support agriculture, where in fact the best part in agriculture is, the challenging part in agriculture is, even though the fact still remains that 62% of the population depend on agriculture, the fact is 50% of the land holding is less than 1.25 acres, that is half hectare. If one were to translate this land holding into the calculation sake as to up to one hectare, if one were to take into consideration, then you're, talk, you're talking about 70% of the land holding is held, is within one hectare. We have very small and marginal farmers and if these small and marginal farmers do not make money, the economy is shattered. What we did, what we could actually do is come up with those initiatives to handhold farmers through RBKs, setting up of Raitu Barosa Kendras where every village has one, where you have an agricultural graduate sitting in those villages, in those RBKs, where everything from seed to sale of crop is handheld through these RBKs. And with such kind of micromanagement, also incentivizing farmers with the production incentives as well, that farming sector could survive. This is one major sector which actually comes to give you a support for the employment. Then the other major sector which is another sector which actually supports is MSMEs. MSMEs also, the one word to speak of, talking about if industries, mega industries, big industries constitute maybe 3 lakh, 4 lakh jobs, you're talking about MSMEs which actually constitute more than 30 lakh jobs. There per se, the employability rate is more. Every MSME is small, but yet employs more number of people when conversion ratio takes place from investment perspective. But these 30 lakhs, these 3 lakhs, these 4 lakhs, these, the, these are the, not the numbers. Dominantly self-employed sections. Self-employed sections constitute a primary more than 1.5 crore population which actually should be doing well for the economy to do well. And through various schemes, various platforms, we've ensured that these self-employed sections are handheld, given support through various schemes. You know, before, I'll give you an example. Before we had come in, we were talking about self-help groups, which actually constitute more than a crore of women. Before we had come in, the self-help groups had an NPA and outstanding loans to the extent of 18%. Today, the same self-help groups, the outstanding loans and uh, the NPAs, if one were to look at in this sector now, it is just 0.3%. And a crore of women, livelihoods are dependent on that. Same word, if one were to see the same thing, in every scheme like Vahana Mitra, which talks about self-employed sections who actually are driving the cabs, or actually driving the auto, autos. If economy there fails, the entire state fails. We're talking about uh, uh, barbers, 
talking about so many such self employed sections running into lakhs of lakhs running into lakhs and together running into crores which actually have been supported so as to render phenomenal growth rate in fact uh, uh, when we had come in in 2018 19 our state was figuring probably uh, the least among the states in growth rate in gsdp growth rates the last year numbers if one were to say we are coming we are, we are figuring in top 5 states in the country if gsdp growth rate was to be were to be figured in similarly every initiative that we have taken in supporting every sector the msmes for instance our state can boast about that we had ensured the timely msme incentives were given even during the times of covid that actually protected the msme sector so much so that today the kind of growth that we have seen in msc sectors was so unprecedented never so happened in the state of andhra pradesh in fact uh, the reasons have uh, resulted in the state's manufacturing gva when viewed as a percentage of india's manufacturing gva increasing to 4% during 2019 to 24 from the corresponding figure of 2.9% during 2014 to 19 that was the previous regime that is the kind of gva contribution state's manufacturing gva when compared to a percentage of india's manufacturing gva if one were to compare that we are actually contributing 4% now versus in the previous regime contributing to only 2.9% in those days as i've said the state services sector contributes to only 40% of the state's gva when compared to the national average of 55% and when compared to telangana's state's average of 63% now this is a position that was occasioned by the state's bifurcation that has deprived andhra pradesh of hyderabad city and the economic benefits associated with it now how do we bring about a change which would actually help boost the state's economy now what do we do about wisac now how do we boost wisac's growth story so that ultimately we come across a situation where at least 10 years down the line starting today at least we compete with hyderabad or we compete with bangalore or we compete with chennai so what exactly does vision wisac vision wisaka mean so until and unless we think in those terms until and unless we have passion for this particular place for this particular city this vision can never be visualized can never be obtained can never be realized a lot of people in fact uh, when i speak of these words when i say the first thing what anybody should be doing is to come and stay here as a chief minister if i were to say this unfortunately we have an opposition in the state and uh, we also have a lot of vested interests and also a negative media with vested interests who support the opposition i think many of you also are aware of it that they make a such a hue and cry that in, in fact that uh, we shifting over to wisac they try to make an issue out of it saying that somebody is coming to wisac because they want to grab the lands here 
they want to do that they want to do that and these kind of stories shamelessly are written shamelessly are projected and all for what so they don't want the chief minister to come here they go to the court court cases are filed all for what they don't want chief ministers to come here now why because if the chief minister comes here this area will grow because there's ownership which is going to come for this area there will be a christening of the city as executive capital so they don't want the chief minister to come here because they have vested interests elsewhere they bought land before the capital could be announced elsewhere thousands of acres in private hands benami lands and they're all scared the moment this becomes the executive capital the land rates there would further plunge and because of this western western interest today wisak has taken the beating so going forward i am here to assure everybody here that there would be changes because this is inevitable if one were to compete with hyderabad compete with chennai compete with bangalore it is very important that wisak becomes the economic growth engine that is it in fact if i were to have any vested interest probably i would be having i would be speaking about kadappa see for me i am this the state is ours to everyone here and one in my place should start should think in terms of what is good for the next generation how would we want our children to be positioned how will, how are the state's revenues going to be where is the growth going to come from and how exactly can we boost these revenues to support the growth of andhra pradesh if we do not think like this in terms of growth for wisak then who would think if the vision of the leader is wrong if the vision of the leader is negative then wisak 